Our next question is for Tiana, our host with the most. Tiana, you read using Braille and audiobooks. How important is it to make sure that these types of media are used more, more available and frankly better understood as a legitimate and commercial product? What steps can we take to make this a reality? Um, yeah, thank you so much, Ezra. I think uh, to link back first to something that you said before, uh, you said that after this webinar, you're going to go to the library and you're going to get all these books and you're going to read them. That's a reality for everyone who can see. But for me and for blind people as a whole, for people who read with Braille and audiobooks, it's not a reality. Um, we can't just go to the library and be like, oh, let me just get like 10 books about this topic and then go home and read them all and and then return them and get 10 more and then get 10 more. Like that's not something that we can do. And with services like Audible becoming more mainstream, um, it's becoming easier, but also it comes at a at a price for us. <laughs> Audible is not a it's not a free service. Um, it's a paid service. So it means that if, you know, every book that I want to buy or listen to, I have to buy. Um, uh, there are libraries that offer free audiobooks, which is great. And we're moving in the right direction. Um, but Braille especially is being left in the past. And I think it really needs to be understood that it is a commercial product and that it is an important product in um, the lives of people who are blind and vision impaired especially people who were raised in my generation specifically. Uh, I know future generations of blind children are being raised more on audio content than on Braille. Um, and I would like to try, you know, I think it's very, very important that we make sure that Braille doesn't die. <laughs> and that's another topic uh, completely. But I just, yeah, I think that people really need to understand that for a blind person, Braille is like reading in print or like picking up a paper book and reading it. Whereas audio content for me is like picking up a Kindle and reading on a screen. It's, it's a similar thing, but it's not the same. And it's becoming more and more difficult to find. So I think it's just so important that, um, that authors and publishers are linked with services that can provide Braille embossing and that can provide braille books in their libraries at the moment we've got vision australia and braille house are the two main providers of braille um, so if you're an author it's always very very helpful for you to get in contact with those services and get your books printed out and in the two main libraries um, but yeah i just think it's people need to understand that it, it's not it's very, very important. Braille is so important for blind people and it's not dying like the the common misconception is today. <laughs> so thank you so much for that question. Ezra speaking, thank you for that super informative answer. Um, Braille is so important and I'm going to go to my library and ask them if they have a Braille section as well. They will not have a Braille section. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I uh, a shame, a shame, but um, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge and telling us the importance of keeping Braille alive. We 